In this module, we will look at the digitization of video. The digitization of video is essentially an extension of the digitization process that is used in the case of images. Why is that so? Because of the fact video is essentially the transmission of still images within a given period of time. For example, by sending 15 still images or 30 still images in a second, we can achieve full motion video. And these images are known as frames. Therefore, by sending 30 frames per second, one can achieve full motion video. In the case of computers, it is usually possible to transmit 15 frames per second to achieve good quality video display. Many of the video produced by computer display usually contain a frame rate of 15 frames per second. At 15 frames per second, it is possible to conduct good quality video conferencing. It is also possible to conduct video conferencing using lower frame rates. For instance, it is possible to have video conferencing or to engage in video conferencing at frame rates of approximately 4 to 5 frames per second. Obviously, the bandwidth requirement in this case is low, but the quality will not be as high as in the previous case. Obviously, because of the fact that we are changing, we are sending several images per second, the bandwidth and the storage requirement for video is much higher compared to the digitized data or the digitized audio or for that matter the digitized video. Let us compute the bandwidth requirement for sending a video stream that has a resolution of 640 by 480 pixels. In this case Assume that the color depth is 8 bits. The color depth therefore is 8 bits. Also assume that we are required to send 15 frames per second. The bandwidth for this transmission can be computed as follows. Each frame contains 640 by 480 pixels. Multiply 640 by 480 and each pixel requires 8 bits for the representation of the color. Multiply this by 8 and each second we need to transmit 15 of these images. The required bandwidth in this case would be 36.86 megabits per second which is far higher than any connection or any internet connection bandwidth that we may have. For this reason it is important that we always compress video in order to save storage space and the bandwidth requirements for transmitting video. There are different compression techniques that are used for compressing video. The popular ones are for example MPEG-1, MPEG-2 and QuickTime. Incidentally, MPEG-2 is the technique that is used for compressing video and storing them on DVD discs. There is a new standard that is being introduced currently known as MPEG-4. MPEG-4 is said to be more efficient in terms of the storage requirements and the bandwidth requirements that are needed for transmitting video. It is also said to yield better quality video at lower bandwidths. In most cases, the video that is compressed using these techniques are distributed either on DVDs or they are distributed on CDs to be played on computers. Those that are distributed on DVD discs could also be played on DVD players. There is another form of compressing and delivering video. It is known as streaming. In the case of streaming, the video is not only compressed but it's also streamed. What is streaming? Streaming ensures the correct display of the frames in the sequence in which they were supposed to be displayed. 
Consider the case of a streaming server. We will call this a media server. In this case, the media server is connected to the internet and on the other end, a client may access the media server to receive a stream of video. The stream video is sent over the internet to the client. At the client side, a media player such as the Windows media player will receive the stream and display the stream on the computer screen. This stream is not only compressed but it should also follow the same sequence of frames that originated at the point of origin. The media player to ensure that the frames are displayed in the correct sequence will first store the incoming stream in a buffer. It will then release the frames in the correct sequence in which they are supposed to be displayed. This is the reason as to why sometimes when the connection drops in speed there is a disruption in the display of the streamed video. It is only when the required number of frames are assembled in the buffer the frames are then displayed on the screen. Some of the popular streaming formats are number one Windows Media Video WMV and the real media format. The real media format often has the extension .rm whereas the Windows Media has the extension WMV. The third popular format is the QuickTime format. Once again let us review the three formats. First it's the Windows Media Windows Media Audio that's the first format. Second one is the real format and the third one is the QuickTime format.